Oh, well, hello, friends, and welcome back to the start of another weekly vlog. I wanted to start the vlog today because I'm going to end up having to do some book shopping to grab something else for my March TBR. Um, it is a very crummy, rainy day here in Michigan, so we've got rain, we've got clouds, and I am not going to the gym today, so I thought today would be a perfect situation to start the vlog, do a little book shopping, and take you guys along with me to Barnes & Noble and decide what I am going to pick up next for my March TBR. I am currently reading um, Blue Sisters by Coco Mellors. Mellors, I don't, I don't really know how you say her last name. Um, this is the same author who wrote Cleopatra and Frankenstein, which I have not read yet. I have it on my shelf, um, but I have recently dabbled back into the ARC world from NetGalley because I kind of thought it would be interesting to um, also include some new books in book vlogs. So books that maybe aren't out yet or that are coming out soon, whatever I can get my hands on. Currently my ratio on NetGalley is not that great because I may or may not do this as a trend sometimes where I'm like, I'm going to read a bunch of arcs and then I'll get approved for some and then I'll read like two and then I get distracted and I read other things on my TBR. So yeah, I've got this one now. I started it already and I really enjoy it so far. So this is a contemporary fiction book about a group of sisters, four sisters, who have recently lost one of their sisters. This really drew my attention because I am one of two children in my family and my brother is almost 10 years older than me. So we didn't have a super close relationship growing up. Not only were we 10 years apart, but now you've got a 10 year age gap and he was like a teenage boy with a little sister in elementary school. We just didn't have a lot in common. So I was always really jealous of any friends that I had that had a lot of siblings or at least a sibling that was close in age and the dynamic that that brought to their family. My brother and I were basically only children. We lived our lives kind of as only children because we were just at different ends of the spectrum of a life. I mean, you're talking about what did my 18 year old brother have in common with like his nine year old sister it was just really not much. This drew my attention because it is a large family of sisters also, which I never had. And it is kind of going into loss and grief and different personalities and how each one of these sisters will handle the grief and the loss of losing a sister that they were all very close to and also what part their parents played into it. So I do really like human nature stories like that. However, I am quickly reminded why I get so sucked into fantasy novels or even dark academia type novels because it seems like there's always something happening. You think about the world building in a fantasy series or even just a standalone fantasy, there is always something that is happening to our main character. It's always kind of dramatic. The worlds are magical most of the time, so it seems like over the top and dramatic. And I think why I struggle to just keep going back to like literary fiction books is because it just after a while seems kind of like, okay, now what? So now I'm just reading about these four sisters and like, and then like, does one of them discover that she's like a witch or something? Cause that'd be super cool. That's just how my brain has like transformed into what I prefer as a reader. It's just me. I actually, in all honesty, really like the book so far. It's just good literature. Like, it's very easy to read. Um, I don't feel like anything is really lagging. It's multiple POV. So you're getting a point of view from each sister in the story so far, um, the three sisters that are alive, and then them talking about their experiences growing up and their dynamic with each sister in the family. So I do really like it, and I think the writing is very, very good. However, I can see that I'm getting kind of like what fantasy am I going to read next brain? So that's what we're going to do together. We are going to 
hopefully finish this book together in this vlog. And we are going to go shopping for my next read on my March TBR, which will be a fantasy book, I would imagine. So when we pick that out together, we are going to also read that alongside this book for this vlog. So today is a very chill, very rainy, perfect book shopping day in my opinion. So I think we will head out later and grab a little cup of coffee and do a little book shopping pick something out to read together, and then we will start the week off two books and see how far we get. I'm thinking at least 400 pages for this vlog. I want to say that. This is the other thing I forgot about. I, I haven't been reading on my Kindle in a very long time, and I can only tell you that I'm 37% into the book. I, it drives me crazy when I, I don't know what page. I like. I'm a page number girly. I will sometimes be like, okay, I'm going to sit down and read 20 pages because it's just a marker for me and it's definitely not my preferred method to just read by percentage. At this point in time, I am 37% into this book, so I will probably by today be halfway through. So we are starting this vlog halfway through this book already. I do really enjoy it. I'll give you updates on this as we go and then also whatever we decide to read along with it, I will take you on that journey as well. So without further ado, let's bundle up, head out to the bookstore, and pick out our next read. All right, bye. Oh yeah, rainy day crowd. Let's do this. Tout sera parfait. J'arrête pas d'oublier que je suis déjà arrivé et je peux respirer. Il n'y a rien qui me court après. Je suis là pour kiffer, faire de l'art sans me presser. Ah, ah. Je veux me libérer et mieux me diriger. Je veux sortir de cette cage et je veux tourner la page. Réussir à m'aimer, apprendre à m'accepter. Tous mes côtés pour m'équilibrer, trouver ce que je cherchais. Dire quelque chose de vrai, je veux réussir à me lier à la connaissance du ciel, écrire les mots nécessaires pour guérir et soigner mon âme et mon cœur qui saigne. Mmh, mmh. Je veux me libérer et mieux me diriger. Je veux sortir de cette cage et je veux tourner la page. Je veux réussir à m'aimer, apprendre à m'accepter. Okay, so just left Barnes and Noble and drum roll. What did I get? A curse for true love. It is on my March TBR and I kind of keep putting off finishing it because again with my thing and finishing a series, I just don't want this world to end, but also I'm so excited to see where this story goes. I absolutely love this world. I love Evangeline and Jax, so I'm really excited to see what happens, even though I'm going to be sad when it's over. Also, I'm kind of bummed because they only had two copies in the whole store. Look at this. I don't know if you can see it. On... So the sleeve is all jacked up. And this was the better of the two. Like the other one had a bunch of stuff down at the bottom that was like all messed up. So that kind of stinks. I did get it for 20% off though. And also my Barnes & Noble membership. So for this hardcover, it was a really good deal. So I don't know, whatever. It is what it is. Also, when I was out, I made a little run to <laughs> TJ Maxx because you never know. Um, they often have dog stuff in there for really good prices and the puppy needed some new snacks. So what did we get today? Bocce's Bakery Unicorn Shake. These treats are such good quality. We try to keep him on pretty decent food most of the time. It's I, I think it's very important to like look at what your animals are eating. I know that some people think I'm crazy, but that's just is what it is. If you look at the ingredients of these, I mean, it, you'll be hard pressed to find other dog treats that have ingredients like this. Look at, there's only one, two, three, four, five ingredients, and you can read all of them. 
Like, you know exactly what those ingredients are. I always try to get him these treats if I can. They have them at Target. They have them at most pet stores and also TJ Maxx. And then I have to show you the last thing that I grabbed because I am just kind of, I don't know. I have a thing for coffee mugs too. And so every now and then I'll just go in there, take a little gander at what they have and boom, baby, look at this. Smiley face coffee mug. Are you kidding me? I mean, <laughs> I have a thing with smiley faces. I don't know why I just do anyways I thought this was cool because it's frosted it almost looks like a beer mug but instead of beer I'm just gonna put coffee in it obviously <laughs> and my husband might actually have a heart attack when he sees that I bought one more coffee mug because our cupboards are bursting full but what's a girl to do when you see that at TJ Maxx so we are taking the whole day off from the gym. We did our bookstore run. We did a little TJ Maxx run. I think we are now going to sit down on the couch with our coffee that we grabbed from Starbs and get a little reading in. I'm going to start this book, I think. I prefer to start a book during the day if I can. I think it's hard for me sometimes when I'm tired at night to start a book when I'm laying in bed or after dinner when I'm getting kind of sleepy. So middle of the day, great time to start a new book. So I'm going to start with my next book in the Once Upon a Broken Heart series. And then I will continue reading Blue Sisters along with you guys. So I'm super excited for this weekly vlog to start. We are going to sit down now, get a little reading time in, and I will check in with you guys when I have another update. All right, bye. and happy Saturday. Wanted to do a quick reading check-in with you guys. Um, just wrapped up with the last week of our community CrossFit Open situation happening at the gym, and it was really great. Big, big energy. Um, I'm really glad that it's over so that life can get back to normal a little bit, and the weekends and the week are going to calm down for a few weeks before we go into the next stage of things. If you know, you know. You've been around for me talking about every week since it has started three weeks ago and also what is to come further down the road. And I'll get into all that minimally because I don't want to bore you guys too much with the other side of my life, but it is a big part of it. So it is what it is. With that being said, I wanted to check in on where I'm at on the books for this vlog. So I sat down a little bit and read more this morning, not as much as I wanted to because I had to jet out and help get everything set up. Um, but I sat down and read The Blue Sisters a little bit more this morning. So I am about 60% into this now. Again, it is a contemporary fiction following three sisters after the death of one of their sisters and how they are all kind of dealing with that loss and the grief. And we're starting to see all of the flaws that each character personally deals with and how the death of their sister is making them recognize things in themselves that maybe they should try to work on or parts of life that they shouldn't take for granted because clearly life is fleeting, especially being a young person, you kind of think you're invincible. And when someone who is young passes away, it really changes your outlook on life. So I do really like it. I like that it's the dynamic of three sisters and their relationships with each other. Again, I don't have a big family. I don't have um, a super close relationship with my brother, although I love him. We're not super close and we never have been. So having 
to kind of see this play out, a dynamic between sisters or siblings in general, I think is very, very interesting because it's different for each of them. So out of the three of them that are in the book, um, they have different relationships with each other and to each other. And they're kind of like helping each other communicate with the other one. I do really like it. I'm curious to see where it goes. And I'm at a turning point in the book now, I would say, where these sisters have recognize some of the things in their life that they would like to maybe change or better for themselves going forward. So we're kind of like in that third act, I feel like, where they're um, discovering things, they're going to take action, and then I'm curious to see how that pans out for them. Again, with it being kind of just a contemporary fiction novel, I lack that sense of like wanting to grab it and really read it because it's lacking the the spark of a fantasy for me. I'm just a big fantasy girly. I, I don't know. I don't feel bad about it, okay? It is what it is. However, with that being said, I think that Coco Malores writes very flawlessly and so, like, you really do get lost in it. So once I pick it up and I start reading, you're just kind of, like, going through the story. It just feels like a story that someone is telling you. I never really feel like I'm fighting to read and fall into what the characters are doing or saying. So I do really appreciate that. So we are about 60% on the Blue Sisters as of now. As for A Curse for True Love by Stephanie Garber, what a brilliant idea for me to kind of mix these two together because that one is not giving me my, my desire for fantasy being fulfilled. This is the complete opposite of that. It is so heavy on the fairy tale fantasy and I so quickly forget every time that that's how Stephanie Garber writes and it continuously blows my mind. Um, I am currently at page 184. So yes, I have read quite a bit since I have talked with you guys last. It's because the day I got it, I sat down and read like over 100 pages because it's just written like that. If you've read any of Stephanie Garber's writing, you know what I'm talking about, how you can really just get lost in the sauce in her stuff. I <laughs> Thoughts and opinions on where we're at. First and foremost, immediately picks up right where it left off and I love being back in this world. I saw someone else, I think it was Carrie Reads in one of her videos when she was talking about these um, books and how Stephanie Garber is so like unashamed to just put fairy tale like in your face and I think that's why I love it so much because it's so whimsical to the point where you it's almost silly and but it works and I don't know why uh, but with it picking right back up where I left off we see Evangeline now in this story starting at a much different place than where she ended in book two I'm not gonna give too many spoilers um but it was almost a little frustrating because one of the things I loved about book one and book two is watching Evangeline grow into this beautiful young woman who was really learning how to stand up on her own two feet and fight for what she thinks is right. Um, she's always had a very strong moral compass, which continues in this story, but she was becoming this character that was learning how to basically be a princess, like a strong-willed princess, because her husband, the prince in book two, was definitely not able to rule the kingdom that he was a part of. So I really loved seeing that in book one and book two. Um, book three, she's starting in a much different place, and it's a little bit like frustrating because I'm like, oh god, she did so good, and she's moved forward so, so much. So at the start of this book, she's almost suffering from this magical form of amnesia where her memories have been completely removed from her. So she doesn't remember how she became married, how she got to the Great North, anything about the Prince of Hearts, Jax, and she's starting basically from zero. And she only has what the people around her are telling her. And it quickly comes out that Apollo, the prince, is a little bit jealous and kind of using this circumstance that sh that Evangeline is in to weave stories together how he wants her to see them. So Jax is also like a wanted man at the beginning of this book. And he can't just come straight out and interact with Evangeline, but he knows that she doesn't remember who he is. So he's kind of being a little bit conniving and cunning, just how he always is, and slowly introducing himself back to her, hoping I think that it will spark some memory in her and it's starting to work. What I love 
so much about the story right out of the gate is the tension. Oh my gosh, what a beautiful display of slow burn romance. So Evangeline feels the spark with this man that she doesn't know is the Prince of Hearts and she can't quite put her finger on it. And it's all of this like touching and brushing of lips to the ear and holding to protect her when something bad happens, but she feels like these butterflies in her stomach and she doesn't know exactly why she's feeling them. So it is so deliciously slow burn that I am obsessed. Like I am gobbling this up. Every time she thinks about trying to find him and she can't figure out why she is so into this guy, I'm just like losing my mind. And it is giving me life. Like there's something so beautiful about a fairy tale slow burn and I am absolutely here for it. I am definitely really sad that I'm almost halfway through this book because when it's over, it's over. Like this is the, this is it. This is the last book in the series and I'm going to be really sad to leave these characters, but I truly can't wait to see what ends up happening with Evangeline, how she's going to fight back from where she is starting in this book. And what happens to this kind of like love triangle that's happening now? Because she knows that she's a married woman. She's married to this Prince Apollo. And again, that moral compass of hers is always keeping her from just doing something that she would feel guilty about or that would harm others around her. But she is so drawn to this mysterious man. And she doesn't know why. And it just feels right. It's like it is wrong, but it's right. And it is it makes me giddy and like gives me butterflies too. I love it so, 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 so much. So I'm really excited to see what happens in this. I think I'm going to try to chip away a little bit more at Blue Sisters though today because I'm only 60% through. And if I get wrapped up in this, I don't know if I'll be able to put it down. So for today, I think we are going to sit down a little bit and read Blue Sisters, but I'm also going to do like a little bit of a Saturday reset. So we've got some house cleaning, some laundry, and I have to sit down and edit for my next vlog that is going to be coming out this coming week. So we will do that today. Maybe take the dog out on a walk later. The sun is out. So per usual in Michigan, when the sun comes out, you want to take advantage of that at any time that you can. So that's the plan for today. Just wanted to give you guys that quick check-in and we will sit down and read a little bit later. Until then, I will check in with you guys as soon as I have another update. Bye. Good morning, friends, and happy Monday. We have made it to a brand new week. <sighs> Here we are, starting fresh once again. But I wanted to give you a quick reading update before I got on with the rest of my morning, um, because as Mondays usually do, they get away from me quite quickly. And I don't want to not check in with you guys like I did on my last vlog, which I am currently exporting as we speak. I just finished the editing this morning and I'm laughing to myself because it appears that in the last weekly vlog that will be coming out probably later this afternoon, I did the entirety of it from my couch. Like I couldn't give you guys any other 
scenery to look at besides me on my couch. So preemptive apologies for that. Um, such is life, I guess. I really like to be a couch girly and I don't feel that bad about it, okay? I mean, it is what it is. But I was just giggling to myself and I will, going forward, try to, uh, you know, work in some different check-in areas into my vlog life. I also watched through Mel Reed's latest vlog this morning. I love, so I watch booktube content all the time. I have for years and I've definitely upped my game in keeping up with people's content since I've launched my own channel because I think it's important to see what other people are doing and what is trending as far as like what people like. And in her vlog, Mel Reads talked about trying to find balance in doing a weekly vlog, whether people really like just strictly book stuff, if some people really like some lifestyle things included into the vlogs. And my last one was very heavy on book content mostly. And I think I enjoy a little more of a lifestyle and book update vlog personally, like when I watch vlogs. I understand her struggle in that because you kind of just don't know exactly what the people want and you want to give the people what they want. But I am going to probably try to create a decent balance for myself. This last one, when I was editing it, it seemed so book heavy that it was like, I, I don't know, it just seemed like too much. You need a little something to break it up, in my opinion. Um, and because a weekly vlog ends up being pretty darn long, like these videos are anywhere from like half an hour to over an hour, um, depending on the person, just because you have seven days basically of footage of reading multiple books. And if you are including lifestyle content, stuff that goes along with that as well. And it just kind of like bulks up the video a little bit. But anyways, these are just rambling thoughts that I have in my head as I continue to try and improve myself and my channel and just deliver content that people want to watch. So I am also curious as to what you guys think. What do you like in weekly vlogs? Do you like a little bit of a mix? Do you prefer it just to be like book check-ins and that's basically it? Um, or do you like to see, you know, me going to the gym and me making my coffee and walking my dog because it's really, I don't do that much. It's not all that exciting outside of these things that you are seeing. But anyways, uh, just curious as to what people's thoughts are on that. We are going to do a quick check-in on where I'm at book-wise. So I definitely got to read quite a bit yesterday for A Curse for True Love by Stephanie Garber. Um, I am on right now page 301. So there is just about 100 pages left of this story and I don't want it to end at all. Evangeline has kind of come back around to the character that we know and love. She's remembering things and kind of putting these puzzle pieces together. And she is finally just accepting the way she feels and what she wants in her life. And this girl is about to go after it. I am so excited. The tension that has built through this book was like one for a different level. I mean... She has always had this, like, this tension between her and Jax since book one, but now we are just fully coming to a head, and the multiple POV in this book, which I don't know if I've said that, we do get everybody's POV in the story, which was also new. I didn't know if I was going to like it at first, but I do enjoy being able to read not just from Evangeline's side, but from Apollo's side and from Jax's side as well, so you are getting the true thoughts and feelings of each character and not just like what Evangeline thinks he feels for her. When I say he, I mean Apollo and Jax because she is now kind of like in this love triangle situation. If you have read the first two books, you know what I'm talking about. But this girl is finally like, I know what I want and I'm about to get it. So watch me say less. And I'm so excited to see what happens and how it turns out. She's kind of um, surrounded again by some friends or acquaintances that she has made over the course of the two books. And I'm kind of curious to see how they play a part into this as well. And also just in general, what is going to happen with Jax? We know that Jax is a fate. He is the Prince of Hearts. Any woman that he kisses outside of his one true love dies. And that's not a spoiler. That's like in the first book. So what is a girl like Evangeline to do if she truly loves this man and wants to be with him and he will basically kill her if they have any kind of interaction with each other. 
Um, but the tension that has built between them in the story, he kind of keeps showing up to always save her. And he is a very much like touch her and die kind of guy, which I love that vibe so much. He will do anything to protect this woman and he will put anybody else in harm that causes harm to her. And I am here for it. They have so many fleeting moments of kind of like, you know, intimacy without it being like overly sexual. And I think that makes it even better. The, the tension is just giving tension. And I, I am about to burst if they don't just finally get to kiss or something one day. So about 100 pages left of this. I can't wait to see what happens. Am I really sad that it's going to end soon? Yes, I'm so sad. I feel like this book really, really flew by quickly. I'm surprised that it's not longer than this for a wrap up of the series. So I am going to be curious as to what my thoughts are and how it ends, whether or not I like it and feel satisfied or whether or not I feel like this book maybe felt a little rushed and I don't know, could have been longer than just what was given to us. So far, I absolutely love it. I'm really excited to see where it goes, how it ends. We'll keep you guys posted on what happens. Next up on the list is Blue Sisters by Coco Malores. I sat down and read this this morning and I'm at about 80% right now. Quick recap on this. We are following three sisters who in the beginning of the book lost their fourth sister. Well, she was like the second to youngest sister and these the rest of the sisters were already kind of like spread throughout either the country or even internationally so we have followed the course of these sisters dealing with their grief and their loss and balancing how they interact with each other and also what they are doing within themselves and their own lives how they are living and is it really the best way for them to live and them kind of finally dealing with some very heavy emotions and things that they've never really had to deal with or have been forced to deal with. They've kind of like buried them deep down and it's caused them to act in certain ways and become certain types of people. So we have watched these sisters go through the course of a year of their sister being passed away and dealing with that grief and them finally coming back together because now they have to handle all of her belongings and take care of that finally and kind of just force themselves to deal with this situation and move forward from it. So we are at this kind of cusp of the story where the sisters have been brought back together from all the different places that they've lived and they're dealing with finally going through their sister's belongings and then also dealing with their own issues themselves and while kind of being forced together again as well and how their dynamics have changed since losing a sister. I have stated that I don't have a lot of siblings. I have one sibling who is quite older than me and we never had a super close relationship so I love seeing stuff like this written out. The dynamic of having multiple relationships in a family, so multiple siblings, siblings that um, kind of connect with each other over others, and each one has a different relationship with the other versus the other, that type of thing. And it's really interesting to read about. Also, them as adults kind of dealing with issues from their childhood and how they want to continue to live their adult lives going forward now that they've lost someone so important to them. Like how that is going to change them going forward. So I really, really enjoy the story. Again, I'm at like 80% right now. So I am watching each sister kind of deal with those issues and take action to deal with those issues. So that's where I'm at now. I'm curious to see how each of them officially handles this and how the book is going to wrap up and where we are going to be left with each sister in the story. So I truly enjoy it. If you like books about human growth, trigger warnings on like some sexual abuse, some heavy drug and alcohol use, just... PTSD and depression and anxiety. Very, very heavy topics in this book, but seeing it from different angles and different points of view and how situations like a family dynamic affected three individual people and affected them differently. So if you like stories about that, like human nature and human growth, dealing with issues from your past, and then also just kind of like a family drama, so family dynamics, that I think this would be a very enjoyable book 
for anybody that likes that type of kind of heavy family drama and like learning and growing from things in life as well. So that's where I'm at now with my books. I will be wrapping this vlog up very soon, probably at the end of A Curse for True Love, or I mean, honestly, maybe at the end of both of them. But the goal for this vlog, I think I said between like four or 500 pages, we have read more than that together. Again, I just fly through these books when I'm doing these vlogs with you guys. So I really appreciate that. So we will probably be wrapping this vlog up soon and I will come in with some final thoughts on each book. And I am going to continue on with the day now, finish exporting this video, get the puppy outside to go potty in the snow because yes, it is snowing in March, such as spring in Michigan, as you've heard me complain 800 times already. Um, and then Jim, finish wrapping up work today. I've got uh, actually quite a few meetings this afternoon, so I'm gonna try to get some of this stuff wrapped up work out, move my body, and then I will be reading later today and give you guys another update as soon as I have one. So as always, thank you for joining me on this check-in. I will catch you guys as soon as I have something else to babble on about. All right, bye. Pavel wrapped himself around her and Bonnie, who had been taught all her life to ground her feet, lost her balance and surrendered to his arms. Oh my. Oh. friends I have exciting news I wanted to share my final check-in for this week's vlog of the two books that we read together the first being Blue Sisters by Coco Malors Mellors Malors I don't know I finished this one last night and I am just pleasantly surprised it was just a very good contemporary fiction novel. I really liked the premise of this book. So I loved watching the dynamic of three adult sisters dealing with the loss of one of their other siblings. That is something I don't think any of us can really wrap our heads around unless it has personally happened to you. So we can sit here and kind of like think, yeah, I that would be awful. I would hate even, you know, the brother that is 10 years older than me. I would be devastated if something like that happened to our family, but you don't know until you know. And they had a very funny family dynamic in general growing up. So their father did have struggles with his own alcoholism. Their mother always seemed to basically cover for their father and take his side and kind of stand up for him a lot. And it was kind of just like this bubble of the sisters growing up and them kind of looking out for each other and taking care of each other. And of course, the oldest feeling a lot of responsibility on her shoulders to look after the younger ones. So I loved watching these women as grown adults finally have to deal with some of the issues that came from their childhood because after their sister passed away, it wasn't just dealing with the grief of that situation. It was bringing forward everything that they had dealt with as children and how that made them into the adult women that they are today. And also with dealing with something like this loss of a close family member, kind of coming to realize that life is definitely a fragile thing and some of them need to get their together and not waste something that their sister who did pass away was like full of life and could have just made so much of herself. So I liked seeing them all at their own time. So at their own pacing, realize um, maybe some flaws within themselves and some issues within themselves that they really needed to just deal with and then 
make their lives better from it. I was very pleasantly surprised with the way the book ended. It kind of gave me like that really satisfied ending, which I think I generally like out of a fiction novel. Most fiction I read is kind of about human nature. So you're looking for that. We're starting here. We've got such good growth in the middle. And then at the end, I want to see what has come of the like these characters from all of this stuff that we read in the middle portion of the book. So I found it to be a very satisfying ending. This was the first book I read by her. I do have Cleopatra and Frankenstein on my shelf and I am even more excited to read that now more than ever. I can't remember when this comes out. I'll have to, I'll put it here or somewhere um, in the video on the screen because this was an arc that I got from Nat Galley. Again, I thought it would be kind of fun for blogging to if I can get my hands on some arcs um, because then it will give you an idea of what's coming out soon and maybe what you can put on your future TBR or just have on your radar at least but highly recommend especially if you love again that that human nature the growth of characters a family dynamic and also I did give trigger warnings I believe previously but tr major trigger warnings on light domestic abuse definitely cheating sexual situations and a lot of heavy drug and alcohol use. So just forewarning on that, but highly recommend if those are all of your cups of tea, cup of tea, if it's all just in one big cup of tea. I don't know. Anyways, very good book. Really happy with the way it ended. And last but not least, A Curse for True Love by Stephanie Garber. Oh my God. I finished it this morning. I finished it. This is now over. I will never get it back for the first time again. Oh, and I am really bummed. But I do have some thoughts and some feelings on this book. I had kind of read or heard through the booktube grapevine that there were maybe a few things with this. One of those things being that it, book itself coming out seemed very quick, almost a little rushed. And I'm not going to lie, I kind of got that feeling with the way that this book ended. I really liked the way that it ended because in true Stephanie Garber fashion, we are talking about fairy tales and fates and people with magic in a magical land and a girl that just wants nothing but to be loved and to be in love herself. And you know you are most likely going to get your happy ending because she writes about fairy tales. However, it did just kind of seem like we got to the end. Like it happened pretty quickly. The book itself was about 400 pages. I don't know if it's the way, like the word count of this book is not very long or there's not, like the word count is not high or I just absolutely devour anything Stephanie Garber writes. I can't tell you what it was, but I flew through this so quickly that I would, like you could see the end coming and I was like, oh my God, it's already happening. Like I, I was a little shocked by that. Otherwise, I did really enjoy it. I just love these characters so much. The way it started when I was kind of talking about how Evangeline through the first and second book has become such this strong female character and kind of really come into her own and learn how to stand up for herself. She was starting at a different place in this book that was a little frustrating because you have already watched her grow and become this person. So she started almost like she was down here and she really had to fight back to that character that we know and love. But once she did, man she just took off running and that woman was like I know what I want in my life I've known it since I've been a young girl and I am finally ready to fight for it and I really appreciated that not to mention as I had said before the tension between her and Jax in this book was on another level I loved it in book one and two but this was so delectable. I can't even think of another word. It was like mouthwatering. I know these are very descriptive, but if you have read this or if you've been waiting to read this, you will soon know what I mean. They just had all these moments of like actual touching. So like helping each other out of rain soaked clothes, but nothing really more than that. And just fleetingly touching each other's earlobes with their mouths and like um, grazing each other's necks when they were almost kind of like nuzzling but nothing ever went quite too far because again Evangeline being this character that we know and love she is very morally grounded she's like I am a married woman I am not gonna do anything that is like too out of control here I have to stop this but she cannot fight the feelings that she has 
And I think that is the best part of her as a character is where you, you know, we start in book one with her when her poor little heart is broken and she still, even though she's been through so much at this point, is never scared to just listen to her heart and follow her heart. And it is just beautiful. Also, I don't remember the first and second book being quite so violent. And it's not, it's not too bad. It's not like graphic or anything like that. But there's like basically just like fighting and people dying and like Lala if you know you know she's like this amazing character herself she's kind of just like throwing out like that chick is a b I'm gonna like take her down type of vibe and I'm like dang okay and so it's like I kind of love that though reading books like this as an adult because it's almost like this guilty pleasure of reading a fairy tale but also with like a few elements that just make you giggle. I wish it was a little bit longer I will say that I do kind of feel like the ending was maybe a little rushed. Did I hate the way it ended? No. And again if you have not read a Stephanie Garber book this is my last and final plea for you to just get your hands on one of them. Just try it. And like by try it, I mean like get through it. Just get through at least 50% of one of her books and then say, okay, Lori, I really didn't like it. You are also crazy. Or just come back to my video and be like, thank you so much for sending me in this direction because I think that's exactly what you're gonna do. Again, these fairy tale like settings that she puts you in and her verbiage alone in the books is just so descriptive. Like she's always saying these kind of fantastical things that in any other situation, any other book or any other author, you would just be like, this is ridiculous. Get out of here with that. But it just works for her. And I don't know why. So everything just feels so magical and fairy tale like and I just eat it all up and it's done. It's over. Mm. I'm so sad to be done with this world. But such is life and such is life. That means that we are ready for new and exciting things. Meaning I am going to be starting another weekly vlog soon. I did do a bookstore run today and grabbed my next book. So you guys will be seeing another weekly vlog come out after this one. If you have read either of these books, I want to know your thoughts and opinions on them as well. Did you like Blue Sisters? Do you like a family dynamic story like that? Have you read any of these Stephanie Garber books or any of her books in general, like the Caraval series? Let me know your thoughts and opinions on that as well. And as always, if you enjoyed this weekly vlog, go ahead and hit that thumbs up button because it always helps a girl out. If you want to make sure you don't miss any other weekly vlogs or any of my other videos like my monthly wrap-ups or my TBR videos, hit that subscribe button as well. As always, it has been an absolute blast and I can't wait to see you guys in the next one.